All right, family. So it's 5.03 p.m. Uh, we are getting started with our Trusting God class. I hope that everyone's had a great last week and a good weekend. And um, you've been able to grow in the Word and just grow and draw nearer to God. And obviously, we know that draw nearer to God is draw nearer to peace and draw nearer to love and joy and patience and goodness and self-control. Um, and so... We're about to go ahead and go ahead and get in on this lesson. So it's called Mean the Lord, okay? And so the basis lesson will come from Genesis. If you've been riding with us so far, you know that we're going through the whole Bible. In this class specifically, we are going through Genesis, okay? And we are at a certain point in the Bible, okay? Sarah just died. And so now uh, Abraham's focus was really on finding a wife for his son, okay? Finding a wife for his son. And so when he went to find a wife for his son... Well, not when he would find out, he went to send someone to find a wife for his son. What he did was he basically gave him specific instruction of where to go and where to find his wife. And, and so it was an understanding of the type of wife that Isaac needed. And so the right wife for him was going to be of God. And so we'll talk about the method that he used to know that the woman that was the right woman that was of God. Uh, we'll talk about... Um, We'll actually end up going down the John 4 story. So this is John 4 story of Jesus Christ meeting another woman at the well, okay? But instead of that, it's actually the exact opposite type of woman, okay? And so at the well in Genesis, we meet this virtuous, this 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 virgin woman. And at the well on, in Genesis, uh, on John 4, we, we meet this adulteress. We meet this uh, harlotry. We meet this woman that has obviously just given her body and, and, and hasn't, does not, you know, has not had that value for herself in that way or not even her value for herself or no fear of God, I would say, right? It's really not about value for herself. Value for herself is really found in your uh, value for what God is, is doing in your life and what he's giving to you. And like the, the knowledge of wisdom, understanding you receive, it literally says in the Bible that, that love of self begins with wisdom, uh, begins with an acquisition of wisdom. And so you have to understand that for real, like, we, we, we're, we're going to get into this, okay? It's going to be a two-part series. So today we'll talk a little bit about, um, we'll talk a little bit about it and just go down to John 4 story and just talk about who Jesus was when he met uh, this woman at the well and how he presented who the Lord was to this woman, right? But then next week we're going to compare the two women and we're going to talk a little bit about the two, the two, the two paths for real that we see when it comes to women when they meet the Lord and who and, and what he is, what who he is, what he is wanting and desiring, and what that really looks like in specifically women in this case. And this is the beautiful part of the Bible is that it is for everybody, like it's for everybody. It's not just for men. It's not just for uh, kids. It's not just for grandparents. It's not just for old people. It's for women too. And that's something in our ministry that. Um, I don't talk that much about women, but you know, it also is becoming time. It's also becoming time to get into it. Okay. And so today we're going to talk about meeting the Lord and just the reality of who he is. When you meet him next week, we'll talk about what does that look like in your life for real? What does it look like? Okay. But today we're going to talk about what, what Jesus presented as being the Lord. Okay. So Genesis 24, 10 and 12 says, then a servant took 10 camels from the camels of his master. So if you just, if you missed out on what I just said a second ago, we are in a point of Genesis where Abraham has asked his servant to go and find a wife for his son. Okay. Go and find a wife for his son. He gave him specific instructions of where to go. And he didn't want the woman to be from where they're at. He wanted to go back into into the uh, the basically the people uh, his own people to get. Okay, so he goes back and he actually ends up finding his brother's his brother's um, daughter. Right, and so let's get into it. So Genesis twenty four ten and twelve says, then the servant took ten camels from the camels of his master and set out with a variety of good things of his masters in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia. Uh, to Tamia, to the city of Nahor, where he, he made the camels kneel uh, down outside the city by the well of water at evening time, the time when women go go out to draw water. He said, O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show loving kindness to my master Abraham. So he shows up to this well, and he this is like literally where he knows the women come to, okay? The women come to the well. Like this is like, and this is a, just a common theme 
of of the women coming to the well. I would think I would think of this as is 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 uh, uh, understand that the Bible is although we we're reading about old times, the heart behind the situation is still the same, right? So think about places where women always women go to that that uh, uh, um, that are providing or or that need to do for the household. They're going to the grocery store. They're going to the uh, the the mall, wherever it is, wherever you know women go to, right? So he's going to this place to find a wife for Isaac, right? Because he knows the women are going to be there, right? So he said, oh, Lord, the God, my master. And he prays to God, like, please give me success in finding this wife for Isaac, right? For my master. So Genesis 24, 13 to 14, he says, behold, I'm standing by the spring and the daughters of men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now may it be that the girl to whom I say, please let, let, let down your jar so that I may drink. And who answers drink and I will water your camels also. May she be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown loving kindness to my master. Okay, so his methodology. Let's talk about this real quick. Because it's actually really, really perfect. And if you really start to understand, and actually this is actually something that um, a story in the book of Jasher really opened my eyes too, was just the 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 love. That, that these men of God really looked for in the women that they were going for. And that's, how, that's literally how they knew that they were the right one. And so in this situation, we have um, Abraham's servant, and he's coming up, and he's literally saying, this is his method. His method is literally saying that, that um, he just says, now may be that the girl to whom I say, Please let down your jar so that I may drink. And who answers? So not only am I asking this girl, so not just the girl I, I, I find the confidence to ask, right? But then it matters what she says back to me. And and this is funny too. This is this is also a lesson that's very good for men, because um, we're talking about obviously this approaching of of a woman to be a wife. But it's also a very good situation for for men in their lives, you know, because a lot of men approach women. And it's about who I got the conference to talk to, but then you don't even care what the woman says back. So, but his method, the methodology was, I'm going to say this to this woman, right? Drink and I will water your camels also. No, he said, I will say to this woman, please let down your jars that I may drink. And then who answers back? So then I, so he says, I'm looking for a specific spirit within this person. Because then Jesus says, what comes from the mouth comes from the heart, right? So he says, let me, I want to hear this back. I need to hear this back out of the woman that is for my master's son. That is for these men of God. She has to sound like this. Drink and I will water your camels also. And so think about that hospitality that she's showing. He's literally saying that this woman that I asked for some water, not only is she going to give me water, but she's also going to give my camel some water. She's going to go above and beyond with her love. She's going to go above and beyond with her hospitality to make sure she's good and, 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 and to make sure I'm good and make sure I'm okay. That is a wife that's appropriate for a man of God. That is a wife that's appropriate for the man of God. Okay, but then listen real quick. So his methodology, right? Because that's like, you know, this is a good lesson, right? I hope you guys are writing that stuff down. You're listening. You're taking notes. But it's also the shallow. This is the, that's the, this is the shallow end of what we're talking about today. This is the shallow end of what we're talking about today. And I'm, I'm just talking about this because it's a story. We're going on in the Bible. We're going on what's going on. Let's talk about what they're doing. But it's the shallow end. We're about to jump in the deep end in a second. We're about to jump in the deep end in a second, okay? And so but I just want you to understand that about her hospitality, her love, and this the wife of a, of, a, of a man of God that they're seeking to bring to this man of God. What are they looking for? They're looking for love. They're looking for love. And so, but also, now let's dive in deeper. And actually, I'm going to go forward, and then I'm going to go back and we'll dive deeper and deeper, okay? 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So what were they looking for in this woman? They were looking for love inside of her. The woman that I ask to give me some water... And she gives me some water and gives my camel some water. That is the appropriate wife for my master, right? And so, <laughs> and it's, so, it's funny because not even, I just got this revelation that you have to understand that this is so deep though. Because you don't understand that we are also the brides of Christ. We are not appropriate, appropriate to be his bride if we don't have love. Do y'all catch that? Do y'all understand that? That when he sends his messengers out in the world and he's trying to gather us to go come back and marry him, 
are we are we appropriate brides for him is a good is a great question for real because it really says in, the, in this in this word the lord says you will no longer call me master but you will call me husband he wants to be a husband to you he wants to be a husband to you and so he sends out his servants, he sends out his angels, he sends out those and they, and they evaluate and they watch and they're, and, they, and they're experiencing you right now. Is your love appropriate to be his bride? That's a great question that he really just, it was a revelation on my heart today because that's when he, when I was going and was going to talk about this. But is your love appropriate to be his bride? It's a great question for real. So it says, let us love one another, right? So let's go back, though. So we're going to dive into a deeper end right now. Let's dive into a deeper end, a deeper end, right? So then he says his methodology is to drink, and I will water. See, he, he, he says his methodology is to, is to ask, please let down your jars so that I may drink. So literally, he is going to go somewhere. He's uh, basically going to, he's searching for hospitality, and that's how he knows who is the one, right? Well, Jesus did the same thing. He did the exact same thing in John 4. So today we're going to go through John 4 and just talk about, um, today we're going to go through John 4 and just talk about this lesson that he, that he gave and his, and what he said to her, because he really introduced God to this woman for real. He seriously introduced God to this woman. Like when he showed up, when they showed up in Genesis, Rebecca was, 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 uh, was, was, along the virtuous lines that Isaac needed and they were looking for in his life, right? But you understand that Jesus was not for the people who were who were right and good. He wasn't looking for Rebecca's. He was looking for harlots. He was looking for um, Rahab's. He was looking for um, Jezebel's. He was looking for Eve's. He was looking for those type of women. Mary Magdalene's who had seven demons. He was not looking for the perfect, the, the women that, that people looked at and they thought they were just good and righteous and all right. That's not who he was looking for. And so Jesus, this is great because Jesus comes to a, 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 a true sinner. But you understand that this is that Jesus is, it says that no one knows the father but the son and no one knows the father, no one knows the son except the father. And he also says that he and his father are one. He says that he is a reflection of his father. So you understand that everything he did is literally how God treats us. How Jesus treated people is how God treats us. So today we are going to take note as we are all the woman at the well right now. We're all the woman at the well right now. Because we all are called to be brides of Christ. We're all called to marry ourselves to the Lord. That's what we're all called to do. We're all called to have our one spirit with the Lord, right? And so we are all the woman at the will today. And so today, Jesus is going to show us who God is to us truly. And so we're going to go down this line. We're going to go up this, do this story in John 4. And then when we get done with it, um, we'll be done with that today. Next, we're going to come back and, com and compare the two women, okay? Because there's two types of women really outlined in this Bible. In all seriousness, there's righteous women and there's wicked women. But, but you understand this is the same with everybody. There's two roles with everybody in their life. Men, women, it don't, it don't matter. There's two roles. But obviously, those things are going to manifest differently based on the, the challenges of the flesh and men's challenge of the flesh is not the same as women's challenge of the flesh. It's not. And so, but you have to understand that after you conquer is when you can become whole and you can become this androgynous being. It says there's no male, no female. And, and you start to understand that you can be whole because you've conquered though. You're never going to be whole ignoring the, the issues. And so we'll talk about this tomorrow because Jesus was truly trying to make this woman whole, help this woman be whole, okay? Next week, we're going to talk about the difference between a whole woman and a broken woman. This week, we're, I mean, this week, we're going to talk about who is the Lord to us. Jesus Christ showed up and showed himself to be the Lord. Let's get into it, okay? There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Does that sound familiar? We just read that in Genesis, right? The same method, methodology, methodology that went forth for um, them to find a wife for Isaac is the same right now. He's asking for hospitality, okay? So give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. 
Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, how did the Jew, being a Jew, ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, okay, let's stop right there. Let's stop right there, okay? Because this woman's mindset is not right already, okay? She's already hopped in to judgment in her life. She's like, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. She's really putting the divisions between them. Like She's literally been taught this divisive mindset. And that's also what you're going to see too. You're literally going to see how Jesus counteracts everything, every knowledge of the world with truth right now. Every knowledge of the world with truth, he is going to counteract right now. And this is oftentimes how we are with God. You come to God and you come to him with your worldly knowledge and say, oh, this is right. That's right. This is that. And then God tells you, no, actually, you're wrong. This is right. That's is right. Turn this around. Look at it that way. You're looking at it wrong. So that is, I guess, if, if you guys are, if you're taking, if you're taking any type of note, if you're listening right now, the first thing that you're going to have to understand about God, right, is that his thoughts are not your thoughts and his ways are not your ways. This man, Jesus, came and did something on the complete flip opposite of what this woman thought was right in life. She thought that Jews and Samaritans aren't supposed to talk to her. That's the right thing to do, to not talk to each other, right? No love in that at all. So he came to a, a woman who had no idea about love. She was loveless. She didn't know anything. Loveless. And then so Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And so basically he starts to lift himself up above, above race, above nations, above all these things. He's like, bro, I'm a gift from God. What is that? It doesn't matter what, what skin color you are. It doesn't matter what... Uh, class of money you have. It doesn't matter. It is, those things don't matter. I'm a gift from God. Do you not understand that is above race? If you knew the gift that was in front of you, you would have asked me. You would ask me. Give me a drink. And he would have given you living water. And so you understand that one of the things and one of the symbolism and parables of this situation is this coming to this well is that she keeps coming somewhere where she keeps trying to, she keeps getting this temporary satisfaction. She's keeping, she, she, she just keeps getting this temporary satisfaction from the world. And you can tell her mind's wrapped up in the world because what she starts talking about, as soon as she starts talking about, she starts talking about race and, 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 and nationality and where they're from. She keeps coming to this temporary place, keep trying to get in this water, right? And and it's not that the people of the world don't do this. The people will obviously do this, right? But then Jesus Christ says, if you knew who you were talking to, I would give you living water. Living water, this water that never ends. This water you don't have to keep coming back to a dry a, a well to get some water from. This well, this water that once you drink from it, it will be a bubbling spring and never end within you. I will fill you. I will make you whole. What you've been indulging in has been temporary. You eat from it, it feels good. It, it feels good while you eat from it, and then you, you you feel dead inside, stressed out, and you need some more every uh, every day. And every time you don't have it, you feel like you don't you, you can't find your peace. And he's saying, if you knew the gift I am, you have asked him for a drink. And he would have given you living water. And so understand for, like I said, you have to understand this too, is that like, I, um, I guess one of the things I'll say to you about God, right? This is the next thing about when you're meeting the Lord, right? The next thing you have to understand is that is um, we fix our gaze on what's unseen for what's seen will soon be no more. And what's unseen will soon be seen. Okay. That's in Corinthians. Uh, uh, Paul wrote that. And so you have to understand that when you're talking to the Lord, he's not talking about physical things. He's not talking about physical things. The only, the only physical line on here is him saying, give me a drink. And that was literally just a beta in to, to tell the truth. And so you have to understand that this living water is not no physical water. You have to say it's, it's, off, it's the word that comes from his mouth that fills you inside. Meeting the Lord. 
meeting the Lord. He don't talk your language and he's not indulging in your worldly talk either. Because then look at this. He says, therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, how did that you being a Jew ask me for a drink since I'm a Samaritan? And it's funny too, because she is completely living off what she sees. A broken woman. A broken woman. A broken woman. Let's keep going. We're going to, you want to get through a lot with this. So it says, John 4, 11 to 14 says, Jesus said to him, sir, if you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? Who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle. And so literally, so then he starts to say this, sir, you have nothing to draw with. So her mind is completely physical, y'all. I just told you that we are called to fix our gaze on what's unseen because what's seen will soon be no more and what's unseen will soon be seen. When Jesus Christ fed the 5,000 with bread, he later on verified that he was not talking about bread, but a, but a feeding of the word of God. When he did his parables, there were nothing about physical things. They were all spiritual in nature. He said, why don't you understand me? He oftentimes says they have, they have eyes but don't see and they have ears but don't hear. And their hearts are hardened so they don't understand. When you meet the Lord, I promise you, this is one of the one of the, 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 the most mind-blowing things about him. He's not going to talk in your language. He's going to tell you the truth. He's not going to talk earthly. He's not going to talk um, worldly. He's not going to indulge in your worldly, worldly talk and your worldly desires and all those things. No, he's not. But she's confused right now. Literally, he says, I'll give you a living water. She says, sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? He's like, bro, she's like, bro, you don't have a, a nothing to get no water out of here. The, the well is deep. How, like, how in the world are you talking about giving me this, this water, this living water? She's confused. And, she, and then he says, you are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? Who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his son and his cattle. So then, you know what she starts doing, right? She starts comparing him to um, what she knows. That's what we end up doing in the world, right? Is that, okay, the greatest thing in our lives we compare, we think that, 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 that God is something like the greatest thing that we've seen in our life. God is nothing like anything you've ever seen in your life. And that's one thing we have to understand is that it literally says in this Bible that there is no flesh that is good. It talks about the deeds of the flesh. It says that these are flesh are sorcery, enmity, jealousy, uh, pride, strife, um, lustful desires, idolatry, uh, anger, um, outbursts of anger, um, division, dissension, uh, wild parties, drunkenness, all these things are things of the flesh. There is no flesh that compares to God. Don't, don't do it. And that's oftentimes what we do too. I'm trying to say this, this, this is a funny thing too, is that, and then when it comes to, and this is funny because even it comes to Jesus, we look, we, some people really compare Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, uh, the, the, uh, Joseph, um, Moses, and these people to Jesus. There, there's no comparison. You've never seen flesh like the Lord. And so that's something we do when we meet the Lord, right? We start, we start thinking about the greatest people we, we know in our lives, right? But now, this is the thing you have to start understanding is that the, 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 the greatest person you know in your life is in no comparison to God in his ways. Some of you guys... Literally, uh, whoever the best person is in your life, you won't believe nothing that Jesus tells you if the greatest person you know in your life don't believe it. And they hinder you on your own journey because the, Jesus is so much greater. So then he says this. Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. That's why I just said again, like literally, if you keep coming back to these temporary worldly things to, to satisfy yourself, you're going to thirst again. And I know people, if you're on this talk right now, you understand what I'm saying. If you've been on medication for, de for depression, you take the pill, you might feel a little bit, uh, feel good for a little second. And then guess what? The depression hits back again. Oh, I need a pill. 
You take medicine for anxiety. Some of y'all take pills or you smoke for anxiety, whatever. It feels a little bit better. Some hours go by and then you thirst again because it does not really work. But Jesus Christ works in the water that he gives. His satisfaction will never, you will never thirst again if you're drinking from his water. But he says, but the water that I will give him will, will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. And so he's also making it very clear. She's, he's making it very clear. So he's trying to, he's also helping her right now. Okay. So this is the thing about Jesus and the thing about the Lord. It says in, 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 in Thessalonians, for the grace of God to appear to us. And then it says, teaching us. So those two things literally just let you know right there. It says the grace of God appeared to all men, right? And then it said, teaching us. His grace appears teaching us. Jesus was given to us by the grace of God. And what did he do? He taught us. Many times we don't understand that God's grace is that he shows up in our lives and he teaches us to give us peace and show us the right way and show us how to escape sin in our lives. He gives you what you need to escape what you're, what you're going through. That's his grace. That he, didn't, he doesn't just leave you in the dark and let you die in your sin. And so this is the thing about it. Is that like I said, so he's literally saying that you accept this water. It'll, be, uh, it'll, it'll spring up and be an eternal life. So this is the thing about him. So like I said, he is easing her in to the truth right now. He's easing her in. Think about it. So he starts off, right? And he starts off by saying, I'm going to give the guy, you knew, if you knew I was a gift the guy, you would ask me for a drink. So he's, he's baiting her in. He's trying to get her interest, right? But this is who God is, is that he has a game plan. If, have you ever read about Jericho? When they walked around Jericho for seven times and then blew a horn, they had a game plan. In uh, the book of Judges, there's a story where they go around the camp and they wait for a horn to happen and they all start uh, 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 basically fighting each other and battling each other. They think something's going on. And then the Israelites go in and conquer and win. They had a battle plan. Jesus is not without a method when he comes to you. The Lord is not without a method. God, all the same thing. They're all not without a method. They have a method. And so he's drawing her in right now, right? So he says, give me a drink. The only physical thing he said, he starts out with something physical, right? Because she's physical. You got to say something physical to her to get her attention. Says, give me a drink. She starts diving into her physical mindset and her judgment mindset that is not, not allowing her to love properly. She's thinking about Jews and Samaritans. So then he starts talking about, okay, listen, I'm so much above uh, the world, Jews and Samaritans. I'm, a, I'm literally a gift of God right in front of you. Then... She is confused because she's like, hold on, living water, like, you know, obviously she has a, she has a worldly mindset. So then she has this, this worldly mindset and she starts saying how confused she is about, okay, there's water in this well, it's deep. He doesn't have a bowl. How is he going to get some water? How is he going to get some water? <laughs> she's confused because her mindset is so worldly, but he is, he's, he's teaching her and he's growing her and he's, he's has a method, right? So then he starts to say, so in her confusion, and then she starts bringing up more things of faith, right? She says her father, Jacob. So then he has a, 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 a now he, he's breaking, he's breaking her mold away from the world, right? Because at least now she's, she's in her, her right place of faith because Jacob was a man of faith. That's her father. She knows that that is, that her mind is, 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 is now is growing towards the right place, right? First it was on it was on Samaritans and Jews and now he now at least she's on Jacob okay so she's just growing closer and warmer and warmer and warmer now right he's 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 softening her heart so then he says everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again whoever drinks of this water uh, that that I will give him shall never thirst but the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water spring up to eternal life so he starts letting her know how temporary the world is for real. And literally lets her know that I'm a gift from God and what I give you is eternal. What you've been seeking from the world has been temporary. So now he's still teaching her. Now he's, he's going, well, Jesus goes to work. He's teaching her right now. So now he's telling her, okay, so this water that you've been drinking from, you get thirsty again, right? Listen, the water that I give you it's going to bubble up inside of you and it will never stop bubbling and it's eternal. It'll never end. 
So he's teaching her, right? So now he's trying to flip her mindset from this temporary carnal worldly mindset and say, okay, let's step into eternity. Let's step into the, the real you, what's inside of yourself. He's softening her heart, right? Let's keep going. John 4, 15, 18, he says, the woman said to him, sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. So then literally she starts to realize, like, hold on. Lord, I've been thirsty my whole life. I've been, I've been really, I've been really indulged in these temporary things my whole life, Lord. Please give me your eternal water. Let, fill me. So she, so he's, He's helped, it. He's helped her see the light now, right? So now she sees the light. And now that she sees the light, now she's like, okay, now that she wants it, now he gives her the water. <laughs> so he drew, her in, he drew her interest, right? He softened her heart. And this is the thing about, about Jesus is that he's going to tell you the truth, but he has a method. He ain't coming to you just yelling. He ain't just saying, believe in me or, or die. That's not who Jesus is. He comes to you with wisdom. That's not who God is. He comes to you with wisdom. And so he comes to this woman, not right? And so now he gets this woman to realize, and she's like, wait, 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 wait. I've been dead inside my whole life, Lord. Please give me your water. I want, I need this water. Please give me this water. Give me this water so I will not be thirsty again nor come all the way here to draw. So now she's pleading. So now she's pouring her soul out, says, please give it to me. He says to her, so now he gives her the water, right? This is the water she needs for her life, though. And this is the thing is that most of y'all don't want to accept what he had to give you to make your life straight. Oh, 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 oh trust me. 99% uh, of y'all don't want Jesus to talk to you like this. You don't want to even know the truth. And then once you get told it, you definitely don't want to live in it. But let's keep going because he gives her some, some, some living water because this is who Jesus is. So it says in this Bible, it says that, that, um, it says that, 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 it says that the world doesn't want to come to the light for fear that their sins will be exposed, right? So many people are afraid to come to Jesus because you don't even want to really know how dark your life is. But this is who Jesus is. He's the light. So when you come to him, you can't help but see how clearly, uh, you can't help but see clearly how dark your life is. You can't help it. But that's the grace of God is that he literally shines a light on you so you can see clearly, oh my gosh, I have, I, have, I have things I need to repent from and change my life. Guess what? That was Jesus' message the whole time. Some of y'all get baptized and really don't understand the message of repentance. It says, it says this in Matthew, 3, in Matthew 3, keep fruit in bearing with repentance, which means bearing with, keeping with, literally means means. When you turn your life around, I'm, I'm keeping my life turned that way. It also says that those, the, the trees that do not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into a fire. You are called to keep, bear with repentance. But it's the truth too. Some of y'all repent and you don't even know what to repent from. Because you've never even asked Jesus, what is wrong with my life? You never asked him for living water and said, you never even realized how temporary your life is. You never come to him and said, can I please have this eternal water so that I never have to thirst, I never have to search, I don't have to uh, be hungry and thirsty and I don't have to starve, I don't have to, uh, to, to be parched anymore, Lord. You've never done that before. But this woman does it, right? And so guess what? He flashes a light on her life. And he says to her, go, Call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. So literally, at this time, obviously, they're thinking a lot like, she's thinking a lot like, like you, a lot like you, right? I have no husband. Like, I've never literally, I've never stood at the altar. I've never said I do. I've never gotten a ring. Uh, I've never um, signed any paperwork. That's your favorite one, right? I've never signed any paperwork. She said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have correctly said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you have now is not your husband. This you have said truly. So, 
He shines a light on her life and lets her know the reality of her life. This is who Jesus is, though. This is who God is to you. He does not. This is the thing. Oh, my God. I, 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 I'm sorry. But one of the biggest things that hurt my mind when I see people of faith approaching people and telling them, oh, you're like, you're living in sin and that's wrong and this wrong and this wrong and that's wrong. You don't even know why it's wrong. That's why you can't say no more than that. You have no idea what you're talking about. And some of y'all love to say, well, you should just do the gospel. This is the gospel. Helping people see the truth of their life so they can live, uh, they can make the, the, the change they need to make to be right with God. This is the gospel. So he says to her, you have said, I have, you have said correctly, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you have now is not your husband. This have you have said truly. So literally, he is literally saying to her, literally saying to her, literally saying to her, you know what? You're right. You don't have a husband. You've had five husbands. Literally, you went from husband to husband to husband to husband, husband and now you don't even have one anymore. You don't have one at all now. You've been thirsty. He told this girl, just like he said, you keep coming to this well and getting this water and then you're going to be partial, you're going to be thirsty, you're going to keep coming back. Then he flashed a light on her life and told her, look how thirsty you've been. You think you've had no husband. When I say, I'll tell you the truth. You've made five covenants of marriage with men in your life. And the man that you mess with right now, you ain't even made a covenant with them in your heart. This you have said truly. He flashed a light on her life. Some of y'all would run away at this point right now. You would look in Jesus and say, Oh no, I haven't signed any paperwork. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. You're lying to me. Oh my God. Well, no, it's the truth of your life. You ever heard that let no man split apart what God's put together and the two become one flesh? You ever heard that Adam and Eve were married in the Garden of Eden before there was a, 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 a paperwork and a ring and all these things in life? You even heard? You didn't, you didn't know that? You didn't know? Did you, did you think that marriage was verified what was of was from God or from man which one did you thought of? which one did you think it was from and so once you know that it's of God whose rules is marriage by some of y'all live by this and it's the funny thing she lit oh my this is so perfect it's a great talk right now because this is a lie most of y'all have believed in the world and that's why your life is so is so deep in sexual sin. It's because you truly believe some paperwork makes you married. So what you do is you just keep trying out men. And you don't even know the damage you're doing in this world. The Lord is literally saying, I hate divorce. Do you not understand that he hated all five times that those men, that she moved on from those men? All five times that those men just had to disconnect themselves from her? Do you not understand that he literally says any, any person that divorces a married woman and makes her commit adultery and he too commits adultery? So literally from this situation, those five husbands, we're literally talking about seven adulterers. Five husbands. All five of them have been made into adulterers. She's an adulterer. And the man she messing with now is an adulterer. She didn't even realize the damage she's doing. All because she thought, oh, it doesn't really matter until I sign some paperwork. And you run out here like a demon hurting people. Sex is sacred, man. And you really do need to put some respect on it in your life. Some of y'all then then even even for the Lord say, oh, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna um I'm gonna uh and this is oh this is so beautiful too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep talking about this for a second. I'm gonna give you one more second about this and then I'm gonna move on, okay? Because you understand this too is that the Lord literally says to the man that looks at a woman with lust in his eyes commits adultery with her in his heart, right? Right. 
paperwork is not fish, fish, um, 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 fixing that in this world because it's not, it's not, there's no morality to sex with that point. But when you understand that sex is a consummation of marriage and you understand where my eyes are allowed to be at and, where, and then you understand that all oh, my eyes are not allowed to be all around here in this world, but just on my, this, the, the person that he joined me with. That's when you can escape sexual sin in your life. That's why Paul says, if you burn with lust, then go ahead and marry. Put your lust on your, on your partner. The marriage bed is undefiled. And that's funny too, because he says the marriage bed is undefiled. That's the thing is that she married herself to those people. Those people who were her, her husband at the time, she was not sinning in those marriages. They were real marriages. The sin is that she couldn't, that she could not give herself and submit to the, to, to the men and she's become an adulterer because she keeps leaving the marriages. A broken woman he met at the well. A woman that had no idea the calamity that she was doing in the world around her, he met at the well. Everybody in this world, he met at the well because none of us know what we're doing and we're killing people in our lives. None of us do. Even the most, um, in quotation, uh, moral people, you still, you, you still don't get it for real. You still really don't get it. And so we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I got a couple of things for you. So it says, John 4, 19 and 20 says, the woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain. And, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So then literally, okay. Literally, she don't even want to talk about what he just said for real. All he says, but all she says back to him, all she says back to him is, "Okay, sir, you are a man of God. You just told me about my whole life. You just told me about my body count. You just told me about my sexual life. You just told me about my relationship life. You just told me." So she says she's shocked. So this is the thing. This is God, right? When you meet God, is there's definitely a shock factor in all that he knows. Like, oh, my gosh, how do you know this? I never forget when I first read the deeds of the flesh in Galatians. And I'm like, wow, all of my issues are right here. I'll never forget when I read him say that what goes into the mouth goes into the belly, onto the super. What comes in the mouth comes from the heart. And he lists off these things of defilement, right? And I was like, wow, every last thing that causes me pain in my heart is right here. I couldn't believe it. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So then, so now she's like, okay, 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 okay. I'm sold. Okay, I understand. God, you are a man of God. You are a prophet. And so she's like, okay, so listen real quick. Now, now she's trying to figure out something because now she's got this church mentality, though. She's got this worldly view of worship of God. So some of y'all are like, oh, yeah, but, um, you know, our fathers told us that we should we should be in a, a Baptist church. And and then my father told me that I should be in a Lutheran church. And my father told me that I should be the Catholic church. So she still has this worldly mentality, but I mean, she's growing, right? She's changing. She's changing because her mind's in the right place. She ain't nowhere near thinking about uh, the world as she was. Okay. She's changing. She's changing. Okay. So let's talk about what Jesus says next. So then she said, Jesus said to her woman, believe me, an hour is coming. So listen, this is one, one thing that's important because she's not talking about her fathers, right? And that's one of the things we do in the world is we talk about, we go say, oh, my mom told me this. My dad told me this. My grandparents told me this. How can you compare with your mom, your dad, and what they said to what God and what Jesus Christ is telling you, who is Lord, who knows all things? How are you comparing those two things at all? But that's what we do when we meet the Lord, right? We start comparing him with old knowledge, which, which, like he says, if you don't come to the kingdom of heaven as a child, you will not enter. And what he means is you must come humbly. You must not come um, um, with uh, thinking you know something. That's what Paul says. The man that thinks he knows something should know that he uh, uh, should know that he I, should ought to know that he knows nothing. Like uh, so, literally, he's like saying this person knows nothing if he thinks he knows something. And so you understand when you come to the Lord, why are you asking him? How can you compare to him what someone else is what, what, what someone else told you? 
But that's what we do, right? Let's keep going. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him, must worship in spirit and truth. Okay, listen up, listen up. So literally, like I said, she's saying, okay, uh, uh, well, we say we should worship in a cathedral, and you say you should work up in a church, and they say you should work up in a chapel, and they say you should go here, and you say you should do confession. And he's like, woman, believe me, the world told you that. Now listen to God. An hour is coming, and an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. It don't. He literally, he literally says, "You will not even worship Him in a physical place. You worship what you do not know." He says, "You guys worship God, but you don't know Him. We worship what we know. We worship God, but we know Him. For salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming. But an hour is coming. So He's saying, then salvation is from the Jews. But now a time is coming." And now is when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and truth. So he's saying now it does not matter any longer here or there, mountain, this mountain, Indiana, Texas, uh, 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 um, um, church, uh, home, park. It don't matter. The true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and truth. What is your what is spirit? That's what's inside of you. True worship is within. And he says in truth. So literally, he just told this woman the truth. So now he says to her, now he's making this a reality for her. If you are a true worshiper of God, it don't matter where you worship him there or in Jerusalem or wherever you're at. If you're a true worshiper, you're going to worship him in spirit and truth. And so this truth I just gave you, you would live in truth. If you really are worshiping, if you are a true worshiper of God. So from what I just told you, I just told you the truth. Now, are you going to worship him in truth? Are you going to do it? And that is all. And this, 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 this is the thing is that this is the repentance that he wants for us. He shows the truth and he says, OK, now live in truth. I told you what the truth was. Shoot, I told you that anger puts you in the danger of the fires of hell, so live in that reality. I told you that sex was a consummation of marriage, so live in that reality. I told you that I desire compassion, not sacrifices, so live in that reality. I told you that what goes into the mouth goes into the belly and out to the sewer, but what comes from the mouth comes from the heart. Now live in that reality. Live in truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. In spirit and truth. So then the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He was called to Christ. When that, when that one comes, he will declare all things. So Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Okay. And so literally, this is the end of the, the, the John 4. Um, what ends up happening is, like I said, she starts saying, okay, so now she she is really begging her heart. Like, okay, listen, the Messiah is going to say everything to us. And she's kind of hinting, hinting at it that, are, are you this person? And he clarifies, I, he, I, uh, I who speak to you am he. If you come to Christ, he's going to let you clearly know. I. Uh, the, you come to the Lord, the Lord's going to let you know, I am God and there is no other. I am the Lord. I am the living God. I am. The, he's going to let you know specifically who he is. It ain't going to be no whispering trying to figure out, is this God? Is this not God? No, he's going to be very directed. It's a, a talk, talking with authority. I, he, I who speak to you am he. Very upfront and personal. I'm not beating around the bush with you, right? That is who God is. This was a really great lesson about meeting the Lord, for real. It really was. This is who he is and what he does to us in our lives. This is how, he, this is how you, you meet him. And so I got two more scriptures for you, and then we'll be done for the day. And actually, let's start here. So it says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And so you understand that, that faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So true faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So you understand that we go down this, this is the equation, right? So faith 
We got hearing, and then we got the word of Christ, right? So you have to understand that literally, there is no faith without the word of Christ. So she just received the word of Christ. Now the question is, is she going to have faith in it? Is she going to live in truth? Is she going to worship in spirit and truth at this point? And so some of y'all will receive the word of Christ and you deny it and say, oh, I don't believe that. Straight from God's mouth, though. If you don't, well, yeah, yeah, if you don't believe in his ways, how are you going to abide in his perfect world? You think you're going to be a different person? No, you're going to be the same rebellious being. You ain't going to be there. I'm just telling you the truth right now. That's what it says in the Bible. It says that uh, if we go on will willfully sinning um, after receiving knowledge of the truth, all, all that remains is, a, is an expectation of judgment. Literally, if you if you receive the truth and deny it in your life and just say, oh, I just don't want to live in that. I don't believe that. Blah, 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 whatever. Even though you clearly see it's the truth, you ain't calling a lie because you know it's the truth. Then you don't have faith. And you have to be re uh, in reality, you have to actually be real with yourself about do I have faith? And, and you know if you have faith that you receive the word of Christ and you believe it. If you receive the word of Christ and you don't believe it, you don't have faith. And that's just the truth. And so let's keep going. Last thing and we'll be done. Isaiah 53, 1. It says this. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who has believed it? Have you believed it? Have you believed it? Because that's the point. You understand that the, the, the Lord is going to show up to you and he's going to tell you his word. And I'm trying to tell you the truth is, do you believe it or do you not believe it? Do you have faith or do you not have faith? Faith is not just saying that God is real. No. Uh, 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 faith is believing in the word of the Lord that comes to you. Do you believe it or do you not? It says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So literally his word is him. When you, when you receive his word... Do you believe in him or not? Because that's him. Do you believe his message? And so, that's going to wrap up this lesson. It's about meeting the Lord, okay? And so, we all, we all, if you're on this post, you met the Lord. And if you have not met him before, you met him today. And so, understand about meeting the Lord is that, like I said, it's going to be part one. We're going to talk about part two next week. And talk about just the reality of this flashlight on two different types of, uh, of the women at the wells, okay? And the types of, we're also going to go to Proverbs and talk about these two different types of women that he is presenting to us. Um, but meeting the Lord, this is who he is. This is exactly who he is. This is a really great lesson today. I hope you guys really found something good from it. So text prayer request of 317-891-4148. We'll love to go to prayer. love to go to battle with you and for you. Uh, you can text us scripture, text us an uh, a issue, text us a... Uh, a, um, you can text the issue, you can text the scripture, you can text the testimony, you can text us you know, whatever it is you need to text us to journey with you. We're going to journey with you. Text your prayer request at 317-891-4148. And then lastly, tithe and offerings. We, we ask you to save 10% because you're the body of Christ and walking testimony is good news. We encourage you to save 10% to, to support your ministry in this life. We also encourage you to give 10%. Um, so what we do is like like we said, he calls his, his disciples to let go of money, let go of physical possessions is by your giving that they're able to keep their mind focused on um, the Lord and give you a pure message from him. And so give your 10% to the ministry that's feeding you. And then lastly, what, what we do is we pull $3 from that cash app and distribute it back out evenly to those that gave. And that, that cash app is money sign Christ King Way. Hope you guys uh, got something good today from this lesson. It's called Meeting the Lord. I love you guys. We'll be back on here tomorrow at 4.30 uh, for our Stronger and God's Word class. Have a blessed day.